Yeah, I was uh, taking a walk by Otter Lake Campground. It was Easter weekend of 2007, and I have uh, four German short hair pointers with me, and just taking a walk, a little exercise for everybody. And yeah, and I'm just about done with my walk. And the one dog, she's a little older, so she was kind of following behind, and the other three are out in front of me. And I heard the weirdest noise I've ever heard. It was kind of like a cross between a howl and some. I didn't recognize the sound. I'd never heard anything like it before. And I turned around and looked. Well, here it was my dog, and two wolves had hold of her kind of towards the rear end and she's probably 20 yards behind me and as soon as I seen that I turned and started running towards the my dog there to get them wolves off her and I got within maybe less than 10 feet before they got off of her and then they kind of split directions and so I uh, checked on my dog there and she can't get up and it was her that was making that weird howling type noise I imagine from the pain or whatever of getting basically her like the main spinal cord was severed was what happened so anyway then I'm more worried about my other dogs the one's a male and the one wolf was quite a bit bigger than the other and so I figured that was a male and my male dog took off right towards the the male wolf and I tried calling him and he wouldn't come he wouldn't come and they're just like 50 yards away from me. It's kind of hilly country, and I could see them, and then I couldn't see them. And I had a shock collar on the dog, so I started using the shock collar. Well, then my dog started coming back with me, and the wolf and my dog were side by side coming right at me down back down the logging road. And they're eyeing each other up, and kind of like a dominance male thing, you know, like as they're coming. And I thought, boy, they were going to get in a fight or whatever, you know, them two. But they got about 30 yards away from me, and then... The male wolf broke off and I got a hold of my male dog and the other two female dogs, I didn't know where the other wolf went and I couldn't see where the the other two females went. So I was calling and calling for them, blowing a whistle to get them to come and they wouldn't come and I had collars on them so I shocked them. Well, then they came and at least I got a hold of all three of my dogs and by that time the other one had died that had been bitten there and... Then the two wolves came together again, and they were like 70, 80 yards in the woods. You know, they were there. They weren't leaving, and I was too far to carry the dog, so I walked back and got my Jeep and drove back in to, to get the dog, and then the two wolves were still there. Picked up my dog, and away I went, and that was my first real experience with uh, with wolf contact, you know, with canines around, I guess, and how my story kind of started, how I got involved with the wolf stuff, and that was quite an ordeal I guess and I learned a lot from it but uh, yeah. That that dog that was was killed was that a, a state field trial dog? Uh, she was a North American versatile hunting dog. She was a versatile champion. At the time there was probably only about seven or eight dogs in the world that have passed that test with a perfect score like she did. You know, I'm just a small town guy here from Wisconsin and you're competing with people from all over the world actually in these tests and you're quite proud of that kind of thing you know the dog is very valuable dog as far as that and look you know have no kids but it's more or less a member of my family you know it's kind of tragic event to say the least I guess of losing that but yeah it's uh it, it happened it happens all the time you know and it's more and more frequently as of late that's for sure then I you know started dealing with you know I reported the the incident to the I guess it was and at the time was the guy you were supposed to contact what happened you know I didn't know what what to do or you know what happened I thought at at the very minimum they should put some signs up in the area or something to let people know that because this is right this is on a nature trail on a public campground people should know about this because there's there's going to be a bunch of people walking that trail with pets and that sort of thing and then I didn't know what to do but basically I you know I buried my dog and then they send a guy out to investigate what I'm saying if I'm lying or not lying and I showed the the guy right where the event took place and there's a bunch of sand you know so you could see all of the tracks and and everything right where it happened in the blood and that sort of thing and evidently that's not good enough for Mr. And at the time they made uh, the way their rules are they still figured I wasn't telling the truth so they they made that man dig that dog up and that didn't sit well with me to say the least that they don't believe me and you know I'm trying to pull a fast one on the DNR or what the story is but anyway they dug the dog up and did an autopsy and well yeah them are wolf marks and bites and well yeah it's pretty obvious that I was telling the 
the truth, you know. But anyway, so that's how I got involved, and I'm a member of the North American Versatile Hunting Dog Association and the North Central Wisconsin chapter. So I got on the Wolf Science Committee as a representative because our, you know all our members and their dogs and they all hunt the public lands in, in Wisconsin. So I got on the Wolf Science Committee at the time. And it's, it, it seemed like uh, the whole program is designed to promote the wolf, not anything negative about it. You know, they are a dangerous animal. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. All of the people that have a stake in it are on this committee, you know, for or against the, the wolf. And it's not that people are against wolves necessarily. It's just that people also feel they should lose their rights to take a walk on public land with their animals and they should be able to protect their animals. And at least the public should be informed as to what the dangers are or not and, and not be misled as to the dangers of what can happen. And a perfect example would be Somebody put a sign up in the area that there was a dog killed there, you know, to be careful if you're using the campground to keep a close eye on things. And that sign was taken down, and they have a list of like all the animals that are killed by wolves every year, and they do a, you know, a review every year of that sort of thing and my dog was listed as a as a bear hound and my dog is not a bear hound is a bird hunting dog but it was the first bird hunting dog that had been killed by a wolf so it seemed to me that the the dnr was trying to mislead people to believe that they're they're only going to hurt bear dogs which some people have a negative opinions of compared to like a, a pet it's, it's kind of misleading to the the people that have just pets and on the public lands up here with all these wolves running around so anyway i got on the committee and it, it's a lot of you know rules and regulations and they're trying to set their goals and and you know how the program should be run and and you have uh you know, many, many sides there representing them, but it, in the end, it, it, it's uh, it, it's very frustrating for the average person, you know, one way or the other, uh, as to, it don't seem like you're being heard, it's only, you know, the concerns that, to promote the wolf, and, and, it's, and it's not, people don't like wolves, it's just, they are a dangerous animal, and there needs to be precautions, and a very simple precaution would be to let people know that there's wolves in the area. When you don't even allow that information to be out there, tragedies can happen, and a lot more frequently, it just don't seem right not to have a more transparent process onto a a lot of this type of uh, issues. But anyway, I was on that committee for like five years. There was a lot of good come out of it. Both sides are being heard, at least, and they're trying to develop plans to to make things safer and still allow a healthy wolf population in the in the state, you know, which which everybody wants to see. We're not against wolf. We feel that uh, you should have a right to protect your animals from a wolf attack. I just love seeing wolves, but I know they're dangerous. I seen my first one when I was in Montana in the early 80s elk hunting, and to me it was one of the highlights of my life, I guess, seeing that for the first time one. And now I see probably seven or eight, nine, ten a year. I, I love seeing them. I, I love that feeling you get if one howls and you, that hair stands up on the back of your neck. It, you know, it, I like nature, and so does most everybody up here, but you still have to be able to protect your animals basically is all that most of the the hunters or dog owners or pet owners are after and on these committees you also have like the humane society and a lot of anti-hunting organizations on there i understand like some of these farms and stuff around here where they have all these depredations and their answer is that the people of northern wisconsin don't know how to manage their animals putting the blame onto them that's that's not right either. They they care just about as much as their animals, and they love the nature too. That's why they live here. They're making a living off their animals and livestock, and when they get depredated, it's it's a it's not only just financial, but it's heart loss to them too as well.